Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas. We'll be bringing the latest and everything cool every single day. We've got a few dedications today. Uh, Martine, who says, I'm so happy and positive in our gaming show, and he loves it. Thank you so much. James Danner digs our set. Thank you. And we've got two new members, Bo and JJ Harlequin Me Media. Thank you so much, you guys. This rundown is all yours. Let the revolution begin, you can now play video games on Netflix. The streaming giant has joined forces with Mojang to release a new version of the 2015 episodic game Minecraft Story Mode, making it the first real video game playable on the platform. Subscribers can play the game right from the Netflix app on their smartphones, televisions, or desktop computers, and like the console version of the game, simple prompts appear on screen, allowing players to determine the direction of the story. The first three chapters of the game are available now, with the remaining two set to follow next month, and Netflix says this is just the beginning. They plan to release more games on the service in the near future using the same kind of cloud streaming technology that powers other game streaming platforms like PlayStation Now and upcoming ones like Google's Project Stream and Microsoft's Project xCloud. With cloud streaming, all the number crunching is done from a central server, meaning players don't have to install or run anything locally, so you can potentially play powerful AAA games on any device as long as you have a fast internet connection. We'll let you know when more games for Netflix are announced, and this is a huge deal, guys. There's going to be all kinds of new players in no pun intended, in this space, I wouldn't be surprised to see if, uh, maybe not Hulu because there's the Disney Plus um, streaming service as well, and then there's the DC Universe from uh, Warner Brothers. I, I think a lot of people are going to get into this, uh, hey, you want to play a video game? Here you go. You know, go ahead and try it. Yes, we're going to need super fast internet, and yes, I understand that not everybody has super fast internet, but trust me, companies all over the world are working incredibly hard to make super fast internet available in every square inch of the planet. You know, it's not hard to see either. And here we go. Here's evidence presented into the courtroom right now with Netflix. Crazy. If Red Dead Redemption 2 has given you a thing for cowboys, Netflix is taking on a different kind of cowboy. Netflix has greenlit a live action series based on the Japanese anime franchise Cowboy Bebop. They're working with Hollywood production company Tomorrow Studios to create a 10 episode first season and like the anime, it will focus on a ragtag team of bounty hunters and mercenaries in the future. Details of the live action adaptation first surfaced last year when Tomorrow Studios bought the rights to make the adaptation and now with Netflix on board, the project can start moving forward. Hollywood and Netflix in particular don't exactly have the best track record when it comes to adapting Japanese anime and manga franchises. Hopefully Cowboy Bebop doesn't disappoint. I think the more cracks that uh, Netflix takes at this, the better it's going to get at it. And I think eventually we will start to see live action um, anime adaptations that are really, really rock solid. I mean, I don't think it's easy to do that, right? Because the uh, uh, imagination has no limits when you're dealing with animation. That's why animation is still really relevant and why we still go and see huge movies like, uh, you know, Ralph Breaks the Internet is because we can do trippy things with animation that just take us into, you know, the ethereal and the esoteric in some massive ways. Hard to do that in a realistic fashion with live action. Marvel seems to be able to ha have overcome that, and word is on the street that Aquaman has done that as well. Uh, so it's going to trickle down. Netflix is going to be able to do this as an episodic thing. And, um, you know, I think, uh, I, you know, I'm excited to see these attempts but clearly we have a ways to go. You know, I, I don't even know if Battle Angel Alita is going to be uh, all it's cracked up to be and look at the talent behind that movie. We'll see. We'll find out soon. All right, moviegoers are going to be able to catch loads of new Spider-Man movies in their web with the new animated movie Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse about to swing into theaters. Can't wait for that. Sony Pictures has announced that they're already working on an entire series of animated follow-ups. Sony Pictures Animation has greenlit a direct sequel to Into the Spider-Verse and they're also working on a spin-off movie that will focus on female heroes like Spider-Woman. These animated projects are on top of the live-action Spider-Man spin-offs that Sony already has in the works, including a Venom sequel and a movie about the anti-hero Morbius, the living vampire. Keep in mind that all these Sony projects are separate from Spider-Man Homecoming and its upcoming sequel, which are part of the Marvel movie universe. Hopefully general audiences don't get confused. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse hits theaters December 12th. I think audiences are smart enough when it comes to Spider-Man that they can take all of this in. Spider-Man is an enduring, amazing character, one of the most popular characters characters on the planet. We just saw the success of the uh, Marvel Spider-Man video game, uh, greatly due to the fact that he's such a well-known character and 
a perfect video game hero, and it was an excellent game, but I feel like we can have multiple versions of Spider-Man, just like we have multiple versions of Spider-Man on the comic book uh, racks, and we also have uh, multiple versions of Spider-Man in the, uh, the universe of Marvel as well, and lots of them have met. That's basically the plot for Into the Spider-Verse. I'm excited about all of this because it, it just, uh, you know, it propels this character and this uh, mythology into, you know, more eyeballs and, and uh, it, it sort of creates, you know, new opportunities to have perspective with this and, and uh, chase after these uh, narrative ideas with, in different ways and it will eventually lead to just better stories and cooler cooler works and more Spider-Man video games, which I'm, I'm all for. All right, Microsoft and Rare haven't let a shaky start spoil their online pirate game, Sea of Thieves. A free expansion for the game lands today known as Shrouded Spoils. The new expansion gives players a lot of smaller tweaks that improve the overall experience, like new fog weather effects, extra ship customization options, different varieties of Kraken beasts, and new items like the explosive Mega Keg. Crowded Spoils is just one of several updates that Rare has planned for the next few months. Another one, called Arena, will give players new PvP battles where they can take on other crews in both ship combat and on foot. That's slated to launch in early 2019. Oh my god, I want to jump back into this game so bad. I was hovering over the icon the other day. I've got other games I've got to review, but I was like, god, I want to check this out again. It was gorgeous, but yeah, it felt like a little repetitious and a little thin, and you know, I felt like I had experienced you know, the same kind of thing over and over again, but it sounds like they're filling it up, and it was really beautiful, so I really want to jump back in. You tell me, are you playing Sea of Thieves? I know a lot of my friends are on the internet there, uh, you know, a lot of people I follow on Twitter um, talk about getting together with their buds and, and just putting hours into this game and having a blast. Are you still playing Sea of Thieves? What do you think? Let me know, okay? In the comments below, that's how it works. Uh, it looks like Skyward Sword might not be flying onto the Nintendo Switch after all. Earlier this week, rumors surfaced that Nintendo is working on a Switch port of the 2011 Wii adventure, but apparently that's not the case. In a statement to Eurogamer, Nintendo says that at this time they have no plans to release Skyward Sword on the Switch. That's sure to come as a disappointment to fans, although it's worth pointing out that having no plans at this time means it could potentially happen down the road. Skyward Sword has already been ported to the Wii U, and Nintendo has brought several other Wii U titles to the Switch, so we'll let you know if they change their mind about Skyward Sword. I know it's coming to the Switch. Come on. They're going to bring out lots of great Zelda experiences to this machine. It's a great Zelda platform because you can play it on, on home on the big screen. It's beautiful. And then you can take it on the road or on a plane or whatever. And you're still inside of this huge, you know, beefy experience. And it's, uh, it, it's just beautiful work. And it needs to be kind of showed off. Obviously, Skyward Sword had a huge install base to work off of. And it probably did some great numbers, and the, the you know the analytics on on how it would sell have probably all been tabulated. It's not as breathtaking as Breath of the Wild, no pun intended. So maybe that's one of the concerns that Nintendo has, is that it will be directly compared to what I think is the best game they've made, the best game I've played, quite frankly, is Breath of the Wild. But I still believe that it's coming, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if Wind Waker also makes it onto the Switch. And I wouldn't be surprised if we're playing a lot of the top-down DS and 3DS and uh, SNES Zelda games on the Switch soon as well. I think that's going to be all part of it. And the other rumor that uh, I think makes perfect sense is Metroid Prime Trilogy is also going to be ported over to the Nintendo Switch. Do you guys want that? Let me know in the comments below. A former resident of Wakanda is going to answer the call of duty. Black Panther co-writer Joe Robert Cole is set to write one of the several upcoming Call of Duty movies. Variety reports that Cole has been hired by Activision to write not the first, but the second planned film, with the first movie already having been penned by writer-director Stefano Solima. It seems Activision wants to get the second film written now so they can begin production before the first movie comes out because they're planning to create an entire cinematic universe surrounding the franchise with multiple different movies. None of the Call of Duty movies have released Windows yet, and Activision hasn't even found a distribution partner, but expect that to change soon. I think Call of Duty is a, um, I think it's an eternal brand. I think it's not going anywhere. I think it's just one of those things you hear it, you go, oh, my attention is over there. Even if you hate it, you're like, Whoa, wait, I, I, Call of Duty thing. Uh, so I think it makes perfect sense to figure out how to make these into movies. They've got lots of characters to draw from. They've built a huge mythology. They've gone crazy with it. So they've got lots of different ways to Michael Bay the hell out of a Call of Duty movie out there. And I think uh, we're going to see some crazy over-the-top stuff that's going to correlate quite well with what we see in the video games. And uh, I'll go check them out. I'll review those movies. They might be terrible. 
I was going to say crap, but it's too soon to say crap. We'll find out when we start to see some footage. But yeah, it, make, it makes sense on Activision's part. Are you excited about a Call of Duty movie? Uh, I don't know. I, I, you know what I should do is put a little poll together. Are you excited to go and see Call of Duty on the big screen? Yes or no? Or what's Call of Duty? You know how I do my polls. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for our rundown today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new one for you. In the meantime, watch the other material that we've been making for you. And if you dig it, hit subscribe, hit that little bell. You can hit that join button and become an EPN member. Thank you. And we also have merch that's available at epn.tv slash merch. That's the landing page that will take you off to Amazon and to Design by Humans and Teespring and to our partners that make the Espresso Playground at 8-Bit Beans. Thanks for watching, everybody. Play forever.